In the year 1800, Lieutenant Grant and Matthew Flinders sailed along Victoria's southwest waters. As far as it is known, they were the first Europeans to sight the Warrnambool coastline. The origin of Warrnambool and Lady Bay and the surrounding districts commenced early 1840 when whaling and sealing were carried out along the coast. Warrnambool became a port to process the catches and for the repair of the boats. Rural areas depended very heavily on the coastal port from where the settlers, miners, tradespeople and the necessary goods for their existence were unloaded. The area proved fertile, the soil rich, volcanic. Today the countryside is most productive with its primary industry, dairying, grazing, potato and onion growing. The Warrnambool Township was surveyed in 1846 and soon became a busy port for the sailing ships. Today Warrnambool is Victoria's fifth largest city. In the Botanical Gardens, one of the best and the oldest in the state of Victoria, one can be refreshed and enjoy its quiet beauty. The port of Warrnambool Maritime Village, Flagstaff Hill, is a unique park, recreating the port during the 19th century, demonstrating the glorious days of the sailing ship, with displays of the treacherous coast, historic port buildings, the restoration of sailing ships, craftsmen's arts and skills and all activities of the past. In 1851, Warrnambool's first newspaper, The Examiner, was printed, and 1874 saw the supply of gas lighting to the township. A flagstaff was erected in 1853 to provide a signal point. The upper lighthouse was built in the same year. The whole of the southwestern coastline lived in fear of a Russian invasion. In 1880, to fortify the port, large cannon and gun emplacements were erected on the seaward approaches from which cannonballs could be fired on enemy daring to enter Lady Bay. Warrnambool is situated between two rivers, the Mary and the Hopkins, 
from the Mary, water was connected to the township in 1893. The year's consumption, some 40,000 gallons. The Wollaston Bridge spanning the river was built at a cost of $10,000 in 1890. The suspension cables used were from the Melbourne cable trams. The larger of the two rivers, the Hopkins, rises east of Ararat and flows 274 kilometres to the ocean. We join the river at the Hopkins Falls some 25 kilometres upstream. The river is an important habitat for fresh water eels which spawn each year in the deep ocean waters off North Queensland. Then the young eels come south during spring they move upstream from our southern coast in their thousands, struggling to climb the Hopkins Falls, reaching the quiet waters above. Fresh water meets the salt seven kilometres up from the mouth at Jubilee Park, a last century established holiday camping ground and family picnic area where there is access to the river for fishing, swimming and boating. As we move downstream, there is much activity on the broad water. The Hopkins Bridge spans the river at the Ocean Road and near its mouth. Fishing from the bridge is a great attraction with many varieties of fish waiting to be hooked. wide estuary narrows at the mouth and from Hopkins Point we view a panorama of beauty as the sun sets in the west across Lady Bay. Turning east we follow the coast 25 kilometres to Childers Cove, a favourite picnic and fishing bay. In 1839 the barge Children was wrecked and today may still be sighted deep in the water in the cove during low tide. Survivors from the 225-tonne barge walked the 60 kilometres to Port Ferry. Their glowing reports of the rural area helped with the discovery of the rich belts of the farming lands. The 70 kilometres from Warrnambool to east of Port Campbell is known as the Graveyard of Ships. The rugged nature of the coastline provides seascapes of never-ending variety. It is a series of vertical cliffs, caverns, archways, blowholes, offshore rock stacks isolated by erosion of the softer cliffs. Some stacks are more than 24 metres high, whilst only 6 metres in diameter. The massive sandstone outcrops crowded into the Bay of Islands are breeding grounds for seabirds. High seas in rough weather add to the beauty of the area. It is said to be one of the world's best coastlines, but the estimated 500 craft which have found a watery grave testify to the treacherous nature of the raging ocean waters.
Perhaps the most renowned tragedy of Victoria's earliest days was the wreck in 1878 of the Lockhart, a three-masted iron clipper of 1,600 tonnes, resulting in the loss of 52 lives and the escape to safety of a youth and a lass, Tom Pearce and Eva Carmichael. On March the 1st, 1878, the Lockhart sailed from London with 17 passengers, eight were Carmichaels, and had a crew of 37. On May 31st, great excitement, expecting to arrive in Melbourne next day. A thick haze appeared. The Otway light was not visible. Towards the morning, June the 1st, the haze cleared. Looming ahead were the towering, almost perpendicular cliffs and several large island rocks, their forbidding sides as sheer as the mainland. The ship was dangerously close to shore. A desperate attempt was made to turn the ship from the land. As the gallant ship was responding, a huge wave threw her broadside against a steep island rock just west of Loch Ard Bulge. Heavy seas broke over her on both sides. She commenced to roll and was sinking fast. The captain ordered the lifeboat launched for the ladies. Tom Pearce, a senior apprentice with four able seamen, manned it, but could not hold it and were thrown into the sea. When Tom came to the surface, he found himself alone with much wreckage, but no sign of life. Floating nearby was the upturned lifeboat, and he clung to it, drifted towards the gorge. In the gorge he swam for the shore to a small sandy beach, exhausted. After some time he heard a faint cry for help, and saw Eva Carmichael clinging to a spar 70 metres from shore. He swam to her assistance in the heavy seas and brought her safely in. She was unconscious badly bruised and blue with cold. Tom carried Eva to one of the two caves in the cliffs, then searched the beach amongst the, amongst the wreckage and found a case of brandy. Opening a bottle, he took a good draught, returned to the cave, made Eva drink some, then rubbed her numb body with the spirit. After resting, Tom set off for help. The towering cliff face seemed impossible. After several desperate attempts he reached the top. Eventually Tom was found staggering along a track by two station hands and told his incredible story. With, with constant care and attention it was feared Eva would not recover from the shock of the tragedy. But later Eva returned to Ireland where she married an Englishman. Tom resumed his life on the sea and figured in three shipwrecks, surviving all three. This historic coastline and the port of Warrnambool is our heritage, but time is ever changing it as it weathers away in nature's fury.